Hey garden friends, welcome back to Flower Patch. Today we are going to sow sweet pea seeds, pre-germinate some flock seeds, and we are going to mix up some mosquito bits water to treat in, uh, plants infested with fungus gnats. So let's get rolling. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and or share with your friends. There's something here they might want to learn about. So first of all, let me move this plant. I was trimming this back. This is a um, Martha Washington geranium, also called a regal pelargonium. And it's been suffering. When I put it back in here, this last, after summer outside, it already was looking puny. Um, it has very tiny bit left of green on it. I, I've been debating on just tossing it and starting just getting another one. Um, and that reminds me, my husband has said he was going to take me plant shopping tomorrow just for a little day away. And um, he asked where I wanted to go. And of course, I said uh, Green Acres over there in Elk Grove. So that's going to be fun. I couldn't help sharing because I'm excited. It's been a while. I've been wanting to go ever since roses uh, came in and they were saying they had all the bare root roses. And there's a couple of roses I'm looking for. One is by Star Roses and Plants. Isn't it Star Roses and Plants? I think. And the other is a Sunblaze Rose. And it's called, uh-oh, I forgot. It's a really pretty, de oh, Dragon Passion Fruit. Dragon, dragon Fruit? I don't know. I'll put it up. Anyways, I'll know it when I see it. So that's on my radar for tomorrow and whatever else they may have in stock. The beautiful thing about the Sacramento area, which Elk Grove is at the southern end of Sacramento, um, is that being a nine zone 9B and being a warm climate, they have a lot of things in that others, like in colder climates, may not have. And up here, they don't have in stock at, because they're catering to that area there that can plant right now. So that's a boon for me. It is two-hour drive for us, but it makes a nice day away. So anyways, it's one of my favorite places to go. So this is all taken care of. I am going to put this over in the other greenhouse. I still got to get my plants up in the other greenhouse. Um, that way it can finish overwintering in there. And if it's Come June, if it's not looking a whole lot better, it's getting tossed. I am done pampering plants. I've got, they've got to either thrive or out they go because I don't have time for all the babying. So I just, it's hard for me. It really is to do that. I've always been such a, uh, I've got to save it type person. All right, I'll just set it there for now. I'll probably trip over it, but who, who cares? Okay, so I was going to do the flux. Now here is the coffee filter and the baggie. So this is how I did the um, delphiniums before. Can you see this? Let me look into the... Yeah, you can. I'm going to set up on this little tray thing that's here. I'm going to open the moistened coffee filter. Now this was recommended, and I've done it before, and I don't know, I didn't remember until one of my viewers said, hey, try the annual flocks in the coffee filter, just like you do the delphiniums. And I thought, that's right. I forgot to do that, so thank you very much. I don't remember offhand who it was, but that's okay. You know who you are. So I'm going to do, i got quite a few left in here. I'm going to, i I'm also going to try to do some indoors. Um, I did winter sow a bunch. And so they're supposed to be good that way. So I'm sprinkling them on here on the coffee filter. I want them to be a little far, far enough apart that when they germinate, um, it'll, they'll be easy to pick up without intermeshing. Because if they get very much of a root, they'll start twining around each other and then you can't get them apart. So there we go. I folded over the coffee filter once over the seeds, and I make sure there's good contact between the coffee filter, because sometimes you can get little air bubbles in there. The coffee filter and the seed, and then I will slip it into this baggie. Now I didn't write on it, because I didn't know if my seeds were out here, and I didn't want to ruin a bag just because. Okay, this one was the 
cherry caramel phlox. Now I first spotted this on a YouTube video of a gal in Britain, little gal in Britain, and she started them on her windowsill. And they were just gorgeous in her garden. Phlox, cherry caramel. Now I only brought the one baggie in here, so um, I'm only going to do the one set. I have this other one that is uh, Blushing Bride, I think. And let me see how the seeds are in there. I got quite a few if I want to try them too. You know, at first, I'm going to do this one, and if it's a success, then I'll do this one. Um, let me see how long it takes to germinate. It should say uh, seeding indoors, plant sprout time 7 to 30 days. That's quite a spread. So um, I be, will be checking this in a few days. And then from five days on, I'll check it daily. And then we will plant them up. And I will share how I do that when that happens. Thinking positively here, we're going to do it when it happens, not if it happens. Okay, so that I will take indoors. And I still have this here. I didn't bring um, my gum farina seeds out, but I'll do that another video because I've already got a lot going on in this one. Okay, so sweet peas. Now, it's often purported that you need to pre-soak your sweet peas. Um, I have found that that is not correct. They do just fine just sowing them directly in the, in the soil. And if you have the taller pots, which I do, I have the four inch, which are not short, but the taller pots, um, usually they are, I think I'm looking around really quick. You know what, so that I have more room, I'm gonna start them in my, these little pots that I got from um, Bootstrap Farmer. Really love these pots. Um, and they're a nice good depth. And then once they, they are getting longer in here, I will then pot them up into the forage pots. And these will save space on my plant rack in the house. Now, what I will do is I'll get them started in there and then I'll bring them out here. And they do fine in the cooler weather. They don't, um, they're not frost sensitive. And inside here, they'll do just fine. So that's what I'm gonna do. I am gonna use this seed starting mix because it's already been sanitized. You saw me do this for when my last video where I was fixing my seed starter kit soil. So that's the leftover. I will fill those up. And um, yeah, we will get rolling on that. So here's one of the trays that came with it uh, that I got from them too. These are nice sturdy. These are like the ones you get at the garden center and they're flimsy. Um, but these ones I got at Bootstrap Farmer are very nice and sturdy. They will last me for years. This one's gotten a little gunky, so I'm gonna need to go clean it out before I put those in it. But I will bring my tray over here and I'll get my sweet pea seeds. I'll get everything cleaned up here so it's a good, nice surface to work on and it's not so cluttered. And then we will start sowing sweet peas. I got things a little bit tidier in here. I need to put this up out of the way. This got dumped out outside on a heavy wind day, so I had to top it up and bring it in. The ivies, this one is a needlepoint ivy, so it's got the real small leaves. Um, yeah, they do great outside here for me during the winter, so I don't have to bring them in. But, okay, so we got space here to spread out. If I bat things away, it's the mosquitoes that are in here. Fortunately, they haven't been coming for me, so I don't know if sometimes they just get in my way. Okay, let me point you a little bit more this way. All right, we're good. Okay, we are going to get my tray to put underneath. As I fill up these, it can be quite messy, so I will do that. So these are for the sweet peas, and I have several varieties here that I could sow. I have, this one is from Renee's Garden Seeds, Heirloom Pastel Sweet Peas. Let's see if that'll focus for you. And these, some of these are older, High Scent. Now this one, if you have never grown this one, this one is called High Scent for a reason. And that is because it is so sweetly perfumed. Some of them have more of a faint scent and others are just, oh, the High Scent is the one that is, really, uh, oh, uh, I want to say odiferous, very fragrant. 
So Sweet Pea Lady Griselle Hamilton. So you see how it's very lavender. Um, Royal Blend. So I, like I said, I've been collecting, I've been wanting to do more sweet peas. Now I have been starting them indoors or in um, pots instead of direct sown. Direct sown works great in our cooler climate, but the gophers love the seeds. So look at this one. This one I especially want. Watermelon. And Molly Ryle Stone. This reminds me of the High Scent, except it's got pink. Pink and cream. And then this one was a dollar store seed packet. And it's got the different... Yeah, there we go. Colors. So I just will pick and choose which ones I want to do today. Now, some people... I may have mentioned this already, but I'm going to mention it again in case I didn't already. And they will soak the seeds. And I do not. I have learned that it's, number one, unnecessary. Completely unnecessary. And number two, if you don't get them uh, potted up right away, they rot quickly. So if you think, okay, I'm going to soak them tonight and plant them tomorrow, um, yeah, it doesn't work. Now, I've also pre-sprouted them in coffee filters. Some people use paper towels. Um, and that was the same. It, there was no benefit in the extra step. So I just go ahead and sew them in the little pots. Now, I will confess that the whole reason I'm using these instead of a four inch pot where I would put like four seeds in is uh, I don't have any four inch pots ready to go. I haven't cleaned them, sanitized them, got them ready. And these were all cleaned and sanitized. I did it, um, well, back in the late fall before when I was getting things tidied up, when these were all stacked. And I thought, oh, I should take those in and soak them and wash them. And I will confess to sticking them in the dishwasher. I make sure there was no, no chunks or anything on them, but I just threw them in there and it just finished it off after I got basically most of the stuff out. So I'm just filling these up. And I know I have plenty of seeds. And the way to success is to sow heavily. And I will have to mark these as I plant them. Now you see some of these have, like this one, this one has a name on it. I'll just cross it out. I didn't scrub it off. Um, it's in the blue paint pen. That can come off. You could squirt it with like alcohol. Um, not squirt it, I could rub it. You could put the alcohol on your rag and rub it off. And it, it, it comes off. Um, I didn't take the time to do that. So. I will probably use my Sharpie, which works fine, on it. And because it's in the black, I'll know that this year I chose the black. I, I do that. Um, I'll change the color per year. And that way I'll know, oh, that was last year's and this year I'm using black. So, okay, so how many have I got here? Four, three, that's 12. And then three more, that will be 15, correct? So that should be sufficient. And then I'll put them on the white tray, which I scrubbed up. And then we'll put them in on the light rack in the house. I've got plenty of free space in there. Now I wanted to talk a little bit about winter sewing here um, and why I advise against most people um, sewing things like the warm weather things like zinnias and cosmos and whatever. Now for me, that doesn't work. You cannot, zinnias, cosmos, all of those like warmer weather and they are cold temperature sensitive. And my springs are so, you know, persnickety. We'll get a, a week or two of very warm weather. So if I winter sewed zinnias or cosmos or whatever, they'd come up. Then we'll get a hard freeze. Well, if they are, have not been taken somewhere to be protected, then they die. And I did um, a test because I thought a lot of people keep saying they're sewing successfully. Zinnias, Cosmos, etc. And all I can think is they don't have that weird spring that we do. Um, they probably have the warmer nights, even zones lower than mine. I am a zone eight. 
and we've had lots of discussions on zones. Now the zone only tells you your average low temperature. It doesn't tell you how long you have that cold temperature and that can have a bearing on what lips. If it was like with tomatoes, um, was it, it was not last year, it was the year before. Um, we had a warm spell, I said, oh, I'll put my tomatoes out, looks like it's safe. And then we had a night that dropped to 20 degrees. And I had wrapped them, I had done all this protective measures, and the first night they looked good. I took the thing off, I was like, oh, okay, they made it through. Wrapped them all back up, because we're supposed to have another cold night. The second night, pulled it off, they looked like, oh, they didn't like it, but it hadn't been as cold as the first night. And then the third night, same thing. And by the third night, or the fourth day after the third night, they just died. So they could take it once, that hard freeze, and even twice, they came through it. Third time, they said, forget this. So it's the same with the warm weather lovers like zinnias and whatever. So if you've winter sowed them, they come up when it gets warm, and then all of a sudden you get cold weather again, they'll die. And or they will struggle um, the rest of the season because they need a good, healthy start. I'm just getting, this is my bird seed scooper, but I needed a little bit more soil in these. Okay, so back to, and that's like we said, that's why I don't winter sow those. I sow, if I want to get an early start on those, I take them in on the light rack and then I'll harden them off. And I have a video on how I harden off. It's a little different than a lot of people. Um, then I will bring them out when the temperatures have settled down. And even then, I will bring them in here. So, you know, it, it, there, it's not worth it to try to winter sow them if you have those type of springs. I just had one viewer tell me that she had went ahead um, because they do have warmer weather and sowed zinnias and then they all came up because they had a warm spell and then they were supposed to get cold again and what to do and I said you got to take them in where it's going to be warm or they just won't make it. So that's why I don't start them winter sowing. And uh, it's just not worth all the work, and then you lose them because you have, you know, super cold weather. The, the, the winter sowing method was never intended for warm weather type plants, or the ones that like the warmer weather. It was always for the cold hardy plants. Um, that was what the whole idea was. And I know which ones I can winter sow because um, they will live through, like mine will just reseed themselves out there, the ones that are hardy. Um, they'll come up like the larkspur. I have patches of larkspur out there. I should show you. Um, and that they, they did that. They re-sowed themselves because I let them go to seed last year. They sprouted. They're all about this tall. And then the cold weather came. So they just sit there. Um, they don't mind the snow. They don't mind freezing. But then come spring when it gets really warm they just come to life and start growing so i know that's a plant i can winter sow they're related to delphiniums so hopefully all my delphiniums that i winter sowed will come through and then the ones i'm starting indoors okay so let's get started got these all filled up i really want these watermelon ones now like i said usually um i can actually sow these in the fall and they'll sprout and then they'll overwinter if depending on the winter. So, you know, that's why I don't always just go ahead and sow in fall. So I'm going to set these on top of the soil. I'm going to put two seeds in each pot towards the far apart from each other, like one in this corner and one in this corner. One in this corner and one in this corner. Now, um, like I said, I do not pre-sprout. I do not get special pots for them, like root trainers. Now, maybe somehow it would benefit them, but I'm not gonna go to the expense um, when I, it already works for me this way. So, oh, I'm getting a lot, I wanna really plant a lot of these. So if I have to plant these others differently, I will. Because I really want this color, and I love when you get a mass of one color. It's called N mass, E-N, M-A-S-S-E, or you can call it en masse, it's French, but I'm not French, so we'll call it en masse, en masse, masses, oh, okay, alrighty, so now, 
sweet peas half an inch below the surface. So I will just press them in what I think is about half an inch. I didn't get any in that one. I missed one. Okay, so like I said, two in each container. At least one, you know, will come up. And when it comes time, if I need to, I will put these, pot these up into the taller pots. And um, then I will now some of them, I probably the, the soil around it, I could scooch it over. I'm just going to put some on top. As long as they're not too deep, they'll be fine. I've even had them sprout on top of the soil. That's why it's, I know it's not that big of a deal. A couple of them I didn't squish down. That's what happens when I get talking and I'm not paying attention closely to what I'm doing. Now this is very airy mix. You saw me try to moisten the seed starting mix that came in that one starter kit in the last video. And it was also the video where I was talking about starter fertilizers. So if you want to see that, I'll, put, I'll link it in the description box below for you. And also I showed you how I um, sterilize the soil. It's another way. Okay, so now I'm just going to firm this down. You always want to firm the soil down onto your seeds. That contact is important between the soil and the seeds. Alrighty, I make sure I firmed them all. It all looks good. So I want water from the top. I may spray these down a little bit if it doesn't seem like it's absorbing the water up. But one thing I love about these pots is because they're see-through, um, you can see where the moisture is. And some people say, well, doesn't you, don't you get that weird mold in the, because you know light gets through? When they're in this together, all shoved close together, um, it doesn't. So. I'm not going to bother marking all of these because I only sewed the one type and I will make out a marker over there that I have cleaned up and I'll put it in those pots and any others I may have share this tray I then will mark and um, that just saves time. Always try to save time. Alright, well I have another spot here so I'm going to do one more just so I have an even spacing in the tray. I've got one more pot over here. I'll put that in there. Put two seeds in. And all is good. Anyways, so I hope you enjoyed learning what I have learned about starter fertilizers. And Really, when I went and did, I dug a little bit deeper, and I went and looked at the instructions on some of them, and they don't say to put them in the hole. They say to mix it into the soil all around, and then plant. That's a different story. So, um, again, though, it has components like bone meal, etc., that aren't always necessary and can pose problems in your soil. So or for your plants. Alrighty, that was watermelon. Now I have some, is this one of them I said? Oh no, here they are, that I scrubbed. These were from a plant and it's a plant that was an annual, so I no longer need it. Where's my pin? Right here, and I will put on this watermelon sweet pea. And then I stick it in the pot. watermelon sweet pea. So I'll put on this side because that way if I start from here to fill up this tray, fill up this tray, then the next batch, I can do the same if I have all the same. I would put another tag but starting here 
and then all these. Then I would have to mark all the pots and just, as I said, save time. Alrighty then, so I was going to mix up a batch of mosquito bit water. So, okay, last thing on the list for today, and that is the mosquito bit water. So, I should have done this sooner, and I just have so many things going on. Um, so, I just get some mosquito bits. Not very many, I like to do a couple tablespoons or more, maybe a quarter cup. And I will usually make a big batch, but I'm gonna do it in this container for now because I don't wanna feel like squeezing it in through the hole. Um, but I just pour it, I have warmish water in here. And why I use warm water is warm water extracts um, the effective ingredient, which is BT. And I will let this sit overnight. And then what I do, in my house plants, I have more big cups like these. This was from Baja Fresh years ago when they made these nice, thick, heavy duty plastic. I have had this thing for 10 years and reused it and reused it. Um, yes, and upstairs I have like McDonald's leftover cups like these that I have used. These ones I have holes in the bottom for doing rose cuttings. These work really great for rose cuttings. Um, and I'll link the blog post, not blog post, the video below. It's it's a real rough because it's one of my first videos, but it's like my most popular video. It's very old. Um, and it's on doing rose cuttings and I do them in the cups. I think that's the one in the cups. I have a few rose starting cuttings and I'm gonna do some more coming up in the spring because I learned something new to me and I'm gonna try it and see how well it works. And I will share it with you when I do. Okay, so. When this has sat overnight and I'm ready to use it, or sometimes I will just keep it like in a container with a lid like this. And when I'm ready to use it, I will pour it through a sieve like this. And I will pour it into, from here, I will pour it into a cup like this. And I'll pour it, and then this catches all the bits that are left on top. You see the little bits in there? Whoops, got it really full. But anyways, you can see that floating on top. That'll capture those. The water will be infused with the killer of the gnats and the larvae, the BT, which is what um, kills them. And then you don't want those on top of your soil because they mildew and mold and it, it's gross. So that's why I make the water, strain out the bits, and use that to water with. And that has proven to be very effective. If you get some soil, potting soil, that is uh, contaminated with the larvae and all of that, which this time of year in the big box stores, even up here at my garden center where I get mine, um, I have that issue this time of year. In the summer, I don't. It seems like sitting out there in the hot sun, they, the larvae die or the gnats die. So that was all of my stuff for today that I said we were going to do. Now this is the ones I was showing or uh, looking for earlier. These see how deep they are for planting the sweet pea seeds and I will scrub these up and I'll probably do some more uh, of my sweet pea seeds because I love sweet peas growing throughout the garden and I also will try to sow some direct seeding and see how well that works. I will probably direct seed them. I have um, these little miniature gopher cages that I ordered online. They have worked very well. See, they're a mesh bag. I got a few of them. These ones are on the smaller side, but perfect for putting like a sweet pea in the ground seed where the gopher can eat it. So I have some two gallon size coming for planting other larger things that I know the uh, gophers love. And Last time, I think it was last time or the time before, I showed you one of the paintings or two of the paintings from the course I'm taking and I wanted to share my latest one. So this one is called the Winter Barn or Snowy Barn. Now I know where I need to work on it a bit more, but I'm pleased with how it turned out and with learning this new method of painting. My prior or the way I'm used to painting is very tight and controlled and um, yeah. So learning to be loose 
is a, a challenge, but it's really nice to do. And you really have to get past the, what's called the messy middle when you're ready to chuck that painting out the door because you think it's turning out horrible. And then you end up with a pretty decent end object. And soon I'm going to keep doing her lessons and then I'll branch out and do my own compositions and design and whatever and then I'll be sure to share those too. So I just wanted to share my painting journey with you. So I think that's it for today. I hope to see you in my next video. And if you have any secret tips or tricks for sewing sweet peas, I'd be happy to hear it. All right, see you later.